Hello, how are we doing? Hi, how are you? I am good. I'm sorry if I'm on a little bit too early. Oh, no. I, I actually tried to get on early because I kind of screwed up last time and went to the wrong page. So, hi, I'm Sharon. <laughs> I'm Austin, very nice to meet you. How are you doing tonight, Sharon? Good, thanks. How are you? I am good. So, so how are you involved with uh, StriveScan and everything? I know I you am, asked I'm for college, volunteer. So I'm on the executive board of IECAC, and I am a college counselor at the University of Chicago Lab School. Oh, very nice. Well, I am a director of admissions at Eureka College. Um, I also work as our athletic liaison and um, work within the athletic department in that area as well. So awesome. just uh, hopefully getting excited to get some kids here and hear a little bit about Eureka College. But. I hope so. I mean, the only thing I can tell you, I, I've been past Eureka when I did some, when I went to Peoria once, and I remember going yep. through going, oh, wait, that's where Ronald Reagan went to college. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we hang our hat on the 1932 grad, so that's a good <laughs> thing, I guess. But yeah, it's, we've done really well this year. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're actually in person on campus, so mm -hmm. um, Dr. Jamal Santa Cruz, right? <laughs> Our president's freaking awesome. Wow. I mean, she just gets things done, and it's just like people, alums were guessing this whole time that we weren't going to be coming back and doing what Illinois State or Bradley would do, and it's like, nope, we're just going to be trailblazers and go get it done. So, so I know that there's been some talk for a, for a few months now about sort of how this pandemic is going to impact like smaller liberal arts colleges, particularly more regional colleges. How is Eureka faring in that regard? So what we're more concerned about, I think, right now, our recruitment class this past year, uh, we actually had a 23% growth in freshman recruitment. Mm -hmm. And then we saw uh, positive two as far as two plus uh, transfers from last year's class. So we saw an increase in recruitment um, and we held steady as far as enrollment goes. What we're concerned about right now is the retention. Um, obviously, we are still in person. Um, but it's very difficult to have on campus activities and mm -hmm. things to do when you can only have so many people and so many things to do. But right. uh, this year for recruitment, I think we're going to set to maintain uh, what we did last year. So that was good. Our administration's all on board with that. Um, I would say you're going to look to see a lot of smaller schools like us become more specific in the recruitment of what we're looking for. Um, I think we're going to, everybody's getting away from the test scores, obviously, but one of the things we've got to do is be very specific in finding the students that are going to succeed. Right. Our retention has to be excellent mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to what it's been. We can't, can't have a 68% retention rate from first year students. We've got to have 80% if possible. So do you guys be uh, curious. How, what data do you have to determine why they leave? So one of the things uh, just this past year, I've actually, we've, this is going to sound really terrible. We've not actually had like an exit form uh, or any type of survey. And I'm just like, how, why? It's not good. Um, so we've been able to collect that data from that. Uh, a lot of what's the issue is becoming is financially, um, you know, private liberal arts college, you're going to pay our average out of pocket is about 15,000 um, and there's no hiding from that. Um, the other thing that is, so we're very high populated and first generation students. 44% um, of our college is in first generation students. So wow. a lot of it could also be home as far as things happening within home life. Um, so I saw, we actually created a category that was just for, um, single fan or single parent households as far as having to go home and take care of children. Um, you know, I coach football uh, as well. And it, we lost two kids because from a football program that had to go home and take care of their siblings. Wow. From single parent house that stunk. And I mean, it was awful. It was heartbreaking. One was a junior. Uh, I think he was actually set to graduate early. Um, and we're trying to still get him to come back. Um, because if not, I don't even care if he plays football again. I just want to graduate. I mean, you've gone through three years of school. You at least deserve it to yourself. And our president has, she's taken a lot of that personally. She's a first generation student herself. And um, 
I think she is really going to be the spearhead for us in that retention aspect because she's got some good ideas and she's going to do some things that she's very proactive um, and gets involved a lot, which I don't feel like you see <laughs> in a lot of places. They just want to sit back and kind of let things come to them. And mm -hmm. she's very proactive in that aspect. And that's a blessing for us. Um, we don't have the ability to be reactive. If we are, then we're in trouble. So uh, how are things with you guys at your school? Are you guys in person? Um, we are hybrid to a point where, so we're a nursery three through K through 12. Um, and they brought the little ones back. And so we're, um, so it's nursery three through second are in person and then third through 12 is still virtual. So we modified okay. our schedule so that we're on a, a block schedule so that the, 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 in the high school anyway, we have, um, the kids have two synchronous one hour meetings per, per class per week. So we go, okay. and it's like Monday, Tuesday is A, or Monday is, so we have A days and B days. So like Monday, Tuesday is A, B, and then there's um, um, blocks of time. And then we put in open hours um, during the day um, and then put in buffers in between Zoom sessions. And then Wednesday is what we call C day. And that is, there's no classes, but there's um, teachers have two hour blocks of office hours as well as assembly. And then we build an um, advisories on Mondays and Fridays so that we still have space to try to do virtual community or like a couple of the sports teams that are like the track team is still able to come out. Um, the golf team is practicing um, so that they can gather, they have time to gather. It has, in terms of our college visits, we cut back so that we don't allow college visits during class time since their, their class meeting time was cut back. So we only do college visits during open hours, office time, and after school. So it's, a, it's lengthened our day for the college counselors. But this way we are able to accommodate like schools from California that want to do a four o'clock, it's two o'clock there. So it, we can get them in. Yep. Yeah, so, so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's where I mean, the timing is working. It's just I'm sick of being in my house. I've been here since March. Um, we literally, yeah. they, we literally, they like Mar um, spring break was supposed to be like on a Wednesday, like March 15th or 17th or something like that. And Thursday at five o'clock, they sent out an email that said to the kids, when you come to school tomorrow, plan to clean out your locker. And so they started their spring break on Monday. We came on Monday and Tuesday. They said, okay, this is how this is going to work. Departments figure it out and um, we'll see you when, when we see you. So I haven't been in my office since, since, the, since the middle of March. Wow, I am so sorry. Yeah, so some of us, I mean, they told us now we can get permission to come and work in the building, but they limit like how many of us can be in an office space and so on. And like for our purposes, my office is such that I would have to sit by the window and a student would have to sit by the door for us to have that six foot space. And I couldn't accommodate a whole family if I needed a family meeting. So, um, wow. and I think part of it for us was driven too, because we have probably a 30, 40% of our faculty are over 40, over 50. And so we started having teachers who were like, we're not coming, we're not coming in the building. So mm -hmm. we kind of had to go virtual because we wouldn't have had any teachers um, or very right. so. Well, I'll be keeping in my thoughts and prayers and I know that uh, it's not an easy situation. Um, yeah. I'm grateful to be back. I will say that we're, we're able to get back to campus and mm -hmm. We're still hosting campus visits. We can only um, operate on a 50% capacity per day. So it's been really weird. We've got a full team meetings that we do through Zoom and it's like, oh, I forget like the other half is here because you don't That's work with me. That's the frustrating thing. We were talking the other day about how there's like conversations that normally you just pop in somebody's office and have. And it's like, we were laughing <laughs> how you can like be answering an email and then you can watch your email feed just, just growing while you're trying to, it's like you can't stay on top of it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So. Yeah, I walked away for, I just had a simple lunch meeting today for like 45 minutes and I came back and I'm like, what happened? I just, I walked away for a second. How is there 50 emails already? And I just missed them all. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been weird. It's been exciting though. I mean, I'm an optimist. I've got to look on the bright side and say, okay, how can we help still? And how can we still be useful? And you know, one of the things that we're doing is we're putting together pre-recorded videos for all these schools in the state of Illinois. Oh. We're just sending it to every single counselor. Um, 
and I, I kind of stole that from Omar Grant uh, with Eastern, and I was like, hey, I'm going <laughs> to take that. <laughs> um, and then we started also doing, we're adding video into our comm flow now. Mm -hmm. um, like personalized, I just take my cell phone and record a video and say, hey, congratulations, you've been admitted. Here's your scholarship for this, this, and this. And we want you to fill out FAFSA. And I have so many kids that respond that to it. so impactful. I remember before I, this is my third year at lab, but I worked at um, a girls boarding school in Virginia for a few years. And I remember um, that was actually something our director did for our, for the girls. So each girl got like a personalized video. It's like, I was so happy to read this in your essay and our yield from those kids was, was phenomenal. And I also saw that the director of admissions at Clark, um, in okay. Massachusetts does that. Um, and they send a, a, a video welcome, you know, when kids get accepted. So. Well, I'm going to, to I'm going to see if I can grow it out and see what happens. I thought it was a cool idea. I saw it from somebody. Yeah, I think so. Kids love the, they love to, to be um, recognized, right? Somebody said anything longer than a TikTok or whatever it is is too long. I was like, oh, I don't know what that is, but okay. Hello. <laughs> you know, our, our lives are driven by social media now. So, yeah. so let's see. So I'm assuming if I, okay, so I will share my screen with the okay. opening and then you have your, you have your access to then share your screen, right? Yes, I do. And we said 30 minutes was what we had, correct? Yeah. So um, don't see anybody popping in yet, though. So. Um, yeah, I was supposed to look and see how many were pre-registered, and I didn't uh, actually get the chance to do that. It was just a little bit of a nightmarish day and meetings from like 8 to 4. So. Same here. I actually just got, I had to leave. A, we were doing our financial aid night tonight. So. Uh, well, our second one, we did one, we usually just do one a year, but we did one this year earlier in the semester focused only on seniors um, to really talk about what test optional means and to try to get probably a third of my kids don't have test scores. So, and we've had kids, I had a, a sophomore who's uh, being recruited for um, fencing who need, you know, needed a score and went to Kansas to take it, you know. And Holy so, cow. I've had kids, I mean, the ones that go to Portage, Indiana, okay, that's not too out of, the, out of the crazy, but, and then I had one student, their family has a lake house in Montana, so he was going to take it in Montana. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's wild. That's too much. No, yeah, I remember having to talk with our board of trustees. I was like, listen, I, I understand that everybody's jumping on this train and I'm like I'm okay with it but we're gonna have to make it experimental I don't want to totally abandon it unless every single person in the world just abandons it and then well it was interesting one of the so this the presentation we had was with compass prep and okay. um and they one of his slides said that I think the number at the start of this process there were only 59 schools that were test blind and now it's up to like or no there were 14 schools that were test blind and that number now is up to 59 you know there's like over 150 that are test optional and nope. only like 15 schools that are t that are still hardcore requiring the test or doing some hybrid form of it so yep it's it's been crazy i'm i've been reading so many blogs and so many of the stuff off icc and just I'm friends with a lot of other like VPs and I'm just like, what are you even taking to the board? Because <laughs> this is my first time doing a lot of this. So I'm just kind of like, uh. so, well, I know because like, well, Northern went test blind this year. So, mm -hmm. right. So. Yeah, it, I, I mean, technically when you look at it, we are test blind. Um, the only thing we're telling them is if they want to turn them in to help test out of things, they're more than welcome to do that. Oh, so, and they're test optional for scholarships as well? Uh, for scholarships, we went solely GPA based. Mm -hmm. So, solely GPA based and a little bit based off of the financial need and, uh, you know, just essay, um, mm -hmm. things that we're able to pick out of the essay that we feel are going to be able to, if we can assist in those areas. Our endowed scholarships actually grew last year. Um, so we've got a young, we've got a guy that has just done a phenomenal job of building that endowed scholarships, Mike Murtaugh. Um, 
he was a VP, senior VP for us for a long time and went into like a phased retirement. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from it. The guy just loves fundraising. Um, and I think he grew our fundraising or endowed scholarships from like 86,000 a year to like 130,000. And I'm just like, Mike, where are you finding these people? And he just, he loves, he loves fundraising. He loves the college. And I'm like, I'm not going to argue with it. Uh, he is not actually, he's a Navy guy. Um, born and raised Navy family and just found a way he was at Loris before he was at Eureka. And then he, uh, just fell in love with Eureka. I just, it's awesome. He's a big Reagan guy too, (laughs) which is really weird, but it's kind of funny. I mean, we have a full tuition scholarship. That's a Reagan scholarship. And, um, because of that Reagan connection, do you tend to attract a more conservative student body? Not really. Um, that's actually, it, it's kind of interesting now that you think about it. Um, when you look at us as a student body, I would say we're not as conservative as, as people would think. I, obviously, it's there. Um, and the town structure is... It's Southern Illinois. So. Yeah, it's 5,000 people in your town. And unless you're in Peoria or Bloomington, it's not a metropolitan area, really. Um, so it, it is different. For a lot of our students, the culture shock is a little bit different at times, but our campus community is very secluded from Eureka, I should say. It's not, it doesn't feel like it's in Eureka. It feels like, it feels like it's in the middle of nowhere, which it is. Um, But what it is, is it's very inclusive and diverse. We actually brought in one of our higher percentage uh, diversity rates this year, which was kind of a good thing for us because we were targeting our students that we felt to come to campus and impact. So that Reagan scholarship program, uh, 74% or 74 students competed and we were over 40% of um, matriculation of those students. Wow. So our really high achieving students Mm -hmm. that came to campus, we did really well with those as far as getting them to come to campus. And that was where we found the difference was, is okay, we've got a really good freshman class. How well will it retain? And what does those numbers look like? That was based off GPA. Um, the test scores were not bad either, though. So, yeah, so that's where the, that exit, exit interview and maybe even just a, a climate survey, you know, not wait until they're ready to go, but sort of check the pulse now. Right. They're fearing. Yeah. Steal that from <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a sponge and I tell everybody this and it's, it's funny because uh, our old director, or old dean, excuse me, uh, our old dean actually is now a VP elsewhere, and he told me, he goes, one of the things I absolutely love about you is you just write everything down. And I've got like an idea section, and I just put it all in there, climate survey. Yeah, we could do that pretty easy. Um, yeah, like, you know, just a, either using like their advisors or, or whoever, you know, just pull them in for a, you know, maybe do even like small focus groups and just have sort of a little round table, invite them to lunch and just want to check in, see how it's going, da, 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 because you kind of don't want the time you know they're unhappy to be when they're on the way out the door. Right. And that's the toughest thing is how do you save a kid like that? You know, you, you don't at this point in time. You know, so you've got to catch it early. Um, I visited um, High Point University a couple years ago, and they have what they call success coaches. And so these are people who are assigned to students regardless. So they have an academic major, but their success coach is somebody that they use um, as sort of a touch point for any challenges that they're having on campus. And this person's job is to initiate contact. So rather than wait for students to come to them, they reach out to kids. So if a student is having financial challenges or they can't get a book or they don't know where to go for certain things, these, th- these are the people that sort of help um, make sure that what small problems don't become big problems. And they did that primarily sure. because they were having retention issues. Six, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Do you have a contact there still? Um, let me. If not, it's fine. I can reach out just so to their I director. I know somebody in the admissions office. I just can't think of their name right off the top of my head, but I will email you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What's your email real quick? Mine is swilliams at uchicago.u. 
huge. So we're about seven, it's about 740. Okay. How, how long do you think we should hang out before we decide that no one's coming? <laughs> Honestly, I tell counselors 10 minutes um, and I'm perfectly fine if you're ready to, you know, I don't know if you have more tonight or not. This is, my um, last, this is my last rodeo for the day. I woke up this morning saying, "Ah, oh, crap, it's not Saturday. So <laughs> it's well, a long week already. Right. How about this? I will, I will be happy to wrap this up for you and make it a quick, easy night. Um, okay. I don't want you to be on here any longer than what you got to. I, I'm, I'm good. But I assume if somebody's going to sign up and was going to be here, they would have been here. But otherwise, it's perfectly all right. So. Okay. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Austin. <laughs> Very nice to meet you as well. I'll be sure to email you. Um, my day tomorrow looks pretty not good. Um, but if nothing else, I will email you Saturday while I'm getting up in the morning and responding to stuff and making sure I get it out there, okay? Great, and I will, in the meantime, I will look up the name of the person I, I met at, Ho, at um, High Point um, and get you in touch with them. Awesome, hey, it was very nice getting to meet you. Stay safe and stay healthy, okay? You too, okay, good Bye. night.